Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. If you're looking for a safe investment, if you're looking for a boxing play that's almost guaranteed to win, right, a safe rate of return, then I'm serious. I want you to stop this video right here because we're about to take high risk, right? Understand I'm a risk taker. I'm the kind of guy who invested in dark coin before anyone knew what that was, right? I would rather, quite frankly, swing for the fences or go deep with a long pass than try to engage in three yards in a cloud of dust, right? This uh, boxing part of the internet is really for gamblers who understand that they're going to have egg on their faces more than 50% of the time. Our goal is to beat the casino. That means taking fighters who look like live underdogs against favorites, fan favorites, with constituencies who the public is telling us are great fighters. Right now, I've been looking at Nanito Denier for a long time. I was very excited about Nanito Denier a few years ago. I like boxer punches. Denier's left hook is one of the best punches in boxing. Right, Denier, quite frankly, to me, looked like he had it all. But understand, being a boxer puncher is a high wire act. Right? If any part of your game slips, right? If your boxing ability slips, if you fall in love too much with your own power to the point where you neglect the boxing and start head hunting, think Shane Mosley, right? Then, quite frankly, you're not going to be the person you once were. Now, Nanito Denier is in his early 30s, but in my opinion, he's not the fighter he was a few years ago. Let's look at his last two fights. Vic Darchinian. I would argue that Denier looked better in his first fight against Darchinian many years ago than he did in his last fight against Darchinian. Now I know knockouts cause amnesia, but wasn't the raging bull outboxing Denaire before he gets caught in the ninth round? Wasn't Denaire's volume dampened? The fight before that, his fight against Guillermo de Gundio, wasn't Denaire at times in that fight? getting taught the sport of boxing, right? Denier, quite frankly, if you go back to the Mathabula fight at several fights ago, Denier's low volume was a bit troubling. You got the feeling that Denier was trying to please network execs by going headhunting, right? He seemed to be making the same mistake that right now in real time, in my opinion, Timothy Bradley is making. If you're a boxer puncher, you need to cling to both. Right? You have to box to set up the punches. Right? Some promoter someplace, some TV executive someplace, I'm sure sits down with these fighters and tries to convince them to make their games more fan friendly. They try to convince them to get away from fundamentals and to get more toward excitement. Knockout sell tickets. Big punches sell tickets. Enhance reputations. 
right? You see fighters like Mike Alvarado getting extra chances, right? He's fighting in a welterweight elimination match as if he has a lot of experience at welterweight because he supposedly has a fan-friendly style. Look, what about boxing brilliance? Look at the guys who have had longevity in the sport, right? The Mayweathers, the Hopkinses. These guys are technicians, right? If you lose sight of the technical aspects of the sport, your game is going to fall apart. I believe Daenerys KO of Vic Darchinian has hidden from the public the fact that he, quite frankly, has lost his firm grasp of fundamentals. Right? Opponents know about his left hook. What they're finding out is that if they can avoid that left hook, they can actually win some rounds. Now let's talk about his opponent, Vetka. His opponent is a big time underdog in this match. He's a greater than 4 to 1 underdog. As I make this video, I believe he's a plus 425. But this guy's dangerous. I like him in the fight. The bet I'm recommending here is the greater than 4 to 1 underdog hedged with Denaire by KO. Right? Put another way, I'm expecting somebody to get dropped in this fight. It could well be Denaire. Right? Because I'm getting greater than 4 to 1 odds on the underdog, I'll even take the underdog straight up. Right? Why not? If the fight goes the distance and the underdog wins, I want to be able to collect there too. Right? 4 to 1, 425 to 1 more than adequately compensates me for the risk. Now understand, Vetka has already beaten a great fighter. He's the fighter who retired Chris John. Vetka has the kind of destabilizing style that works well against technicians. Right? Technicians are the kind of people who are so technical, they're dodging bullets by just leaning their head an inch or so to the side. Right? They figured out distance, they figured out angles. But this Vetka guy has a straight jab. Right? That's something that earlier Denier opponent Jorge Arce doesn't have. He has a straight jab. His game is actually to touch you with the jab, then to take a step back and start throwing hooks at weird angles that you cannot figure out. Understand there are two ways to do things. There's the highly technical way where you're dodging bullets by inches, where the game becomes a matter of angles and inches, where you're able to figure out distance to the point where you can do pull counters, right? Lean your head back, guys punch ends right here, then you come back, right? You can be precise and be dominant in boxing. Or, you can come up with a style that's imprecise, that a technician can't find a sparring partner to duplicate in training camp, right? Imprecise guys can actually rule the roost. Think Ken Norton. Think Jorge Arce a few years ago. Think Vetka, right? Let me also point out, too, but what I like with Vetka is while he's throwing big punches, he himself is elusive. He's hard to catch up with. Right? So, he's fighting Chris John. And keep in mind, John is your prototypical technician. Right? The trains run on a schedule. He's doing things according to plan. But Chris John couldn't figure out the angles of Vetka's punches because they were too unorthodox. On the one hand, Vetka's hitting him with a straight jab. On the other hand, Vetka's throwing punches that have a delay on them 
that are coming in at odd angles. So Chris John gets dropped in both the fifth and sixth rounds. I want you to look at the tape. Not the official reports of the fight. They rule those two knockdowns as slips. Right? In my opinion, those slips were caused by punches. Right? Understand who Chris John is too. He wants to beat one man well, Marquez. Marquez curiously decided against a rematch with Chris John. Right? Well, let me say this. Then, of course, John gets officially dropped in the six, decides to retire. That's how his career ends, folks. He retires on the stool. He understood that halfway through his fight, and this is a master boxer. This is a guy who went into the match unbeaten. This is a guy whose record doesn't even fully reflect how good he was because he beat Rocky Juarez and they call that fight a draw. Right? Chris John's an elite fighter. He's an elite technician who was trying to read clues. Six rounds in against Vetka, he didn't know what he was facing. Right? This is a live underdog fight. Understand it's high risk. I don't want the people looking for safe plays complaining to me after the fight. I know that politically things are against Vetka. As I mentioned his name, I'm sure you know Nonito Denier's name much more than you know Vetka's name. But I'm going with the greater than 4-1 to one underdog here. And I'm going to hedge the play with Denier by KO. Right? Maybe the mainstream press doesn't want to be up front in noting that Denier's skills have dropped a bit. Let's be up front here. I don't think that you know, Denier is as good as he was. I think boxing's a rough sport where you're only in your prime for a brief period of time. And I don't think Denier at this stage of his career can match the reflexes he once had or the volume. I like the greater than 4-1 to one underdog here, Vetka, to win the fight, hedged with Denier by KO. But understand the risk. If the favorite, and there are going to be a lot of gamblers taking the favorite, Denier wins this fight by decision, you lose it all. Okay? Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Tell me if you feel Denier's in decline, or if you believe that Denier is still in the ascendancy and remains on the pound-for-pound -pound list as one of the best fighters in the sport. Let's hear from you. Also visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.